the extension of parallelism right uh, to data flow graphs okay and that is called unfolding okay uh, now the first thing to note over there is that the parallelism that i was talking about at the filter level right was possible i mean I, uh, the way that i went about doing the parallelism was i wrote down the mathematical equations and then said okay you know these are the components or these are the terms required in order to generate y of 2n these are the terms required for generating y of 2n plus 1 etc and that i can then combine all of them together as needed okay but what about general data flow graphs in a general data flow graph it may not be as easy as sort of saying oh you know y of 2n needs x of 2n x of 2n minus 1 and x of 2n minus 2 and i need to combine them in this way right I'll generally have some kind of connection between the different elements in the graph, but it may not be just something which is delayed, multiplied, added together. It may be some slightly more complicated functionality. Right? There, the thing to keep in mind is the main thing that we are concerned about is what is happening in any individual iteration. Okay, And we will look at examples of that in order to understand unfolding clearly moving forward. Right? So, Let's look at sort of the simplest data flow graph, so to say, right? Just one element A feeding into B. Okay. And what I'm saying is that, you know, this A and B, what, what is the meaning of something like this? It basically means that A is a source. It repeatedly exec executes. It doesn't need to wait for anything. So, you know, it will have multiple fi firings, which I could think of as A0, A1, A2, etc. And uh, similarly, B will also have multiple firings, which I could call B0, B1, B2, etc. Okay. Now, I have written it as A0, A1 followed by B0, B1. That's not necessarily the case. right? The moment A0 has completed, B0 can run. But there is a dependency between A to B. In other words, B0 can, happen only, uh, can run only after A0 has completed. But A0 to A1, there is no dependency. I could do them simultaneously or even in the inverse order, it's not going to change the functionality. Okay. What I'm going to do is to create a new graph right, where the terms that I'm going to, you know, the labels that I'm using for the graph are A0, B0, A1, B1. Uh, you know, after drawing this, I actually realized maybe the terms are a little bit confusing in themselves because these are not the same. Right? I don't want to give the impression that the A0 that I have drawn over there corresponds to the A0 that I have drawn, uh, that is the instance of firing of uh, A. Okay. So keep that in mind. This is just a label. right? So this is just a label for the node in the graph. Right? And of course, why is this called A1? Because it is the sort of next iteration of A1. It is another label which is used in order to indicate that this is the subsequent iteration of the same node that I started with. So what I have drawn over here on the right hand side, in other words, is basically I'm going to call it a two unfolded version of the original graph. Why two unfolded? Because one way of looking at it is now the execution of A0 on the right hand side will result in a sequence A00, A01, etc. And similarly, you know, then followed by B00, B01 and so on. And of course, there is this dependency A00 to B00, A01 to B01 and so on. Right? Similarly, A1, A10 to B10, A11 to B11, there is another set of dependencies out there that are once again satisfied independently okay so these are the sort of firing sequences of the new unfolded graph the interesting thing is i can now look at this a00 and it essentially corresponds to whatever i had for this a0 out here okay a1 corresponds to this term right then I can go to A2, which is now the second execution of the A0 node. Okay, And this is the important part. Effectively, what I'm saying is now I have two different copies of 
the A node, right? I'm calling it A0 and A1. The second execution of the A0 node corresponds to the A2 of the original, right? Similarly, I can go to A3, which would be the second execution of the A1 node. Okay. And similarly, I can go forward. I'll have B0, B1, B2, B3, and so on. Okay. So I can create, uh, I mean, effectively what, I've say, uh, what I'm saying is this unfolding, this process of creating this dual copy out here means that I still have these dependencies individually being satisfied, the A0 to B0 dependency and so on. But now I have two copies that are taking care of generating the two sets of sequences. Okay. How do I take this further? I mean, this was of course a very trivial form of a graph. What if I had one delay on that edge between A and B? Right. Now, if I try unfolding this, effectively what I'm saying over here is, you know, in order to understand that, let's look at what the dependencies are like over here. Right. A0 and B0 actually have no dependency. Right? In other words, because of that delay element, it means that there is a initial value token on the edge between A and B and A0 and B0 can both start independent of the other. Okay? Both are sort of free to execute at any time. But for B1 to run, I need the output from A0. That dependency is there. That is exactly what that delay element implies, right? that the output of A0 is in some way necessary for B1. And you know, I can proceed that way. The output of A1 is necessary for B2, output of A2 is necessary for B3 and so on. Okay. If I want to draw the unfolded graph corresponding to this, you know, once again, the first thing that I do is I basically take A, B, create the two copies, A0, A1, B0, B1. Now I need to put the edges. And the important thing to keep in mind is the edges just have to capture these dependencies. And if I look at this, right, there is an A0 to B1 dependency. Right? That's what I can put in here, A0 to B1. Right? But where does A1 go? Right? If I look at it, it goes to B2. And what is B2? It's the next iteration of B0. Right. So, which means that with one delay over here, right, the delayed version of B0 is B2. So, that's what I'm saying over here. The A1, its output needs to go to B2, which basically means it's a delayed, uh, a one sample delayed version going to B0. Right. What does that delay mean? It again means that there is an initial token present on the edge between A1 to B0, which means that the B0 can execute in parallel with A1 if necessary, but the next iteration of B0, which is going to be B2, depends on the output produced by A1. Okay. A slightly more complex example with two delay elements on it. Right. And let's say I'm doing an unfolding by a factor of three. Right. Now, when I'm doing unfolding by a factor of three, the process, procedure is still exactly the same. A0, A1, A2. Now I create three copies of A, three copies of B, B0, B1, B2. The output of A0 is used by B2. That's exactly what is implied over here. Right? What about A1? This is going to be used by B3. Right? But what is B3? There is no B3 node over here. The delayed version is going to be B3 or rather the next. Iteration of B0 is going to be B3. Right? Similarly, from A2 to B4, and the next iteration of this is going to be B4, right? Because there are three copies. So it's going to be B0, B1, B2, then B3 once again over here, then B6 over here, then B9 over here, etc. That's what is going to execute. Okay. So which means that from A1 to B3 is a delayed token going from A1 to B0. And similarly, A2 to B1 a delayed token is basically going to be 4. Okay. 
Now, what happens with I mean, the next thing beyond this would be to say, I want to look at a graph that has cycles in it. Okay. What does it mean to have a cyclic graph? It basically means there is a backward edge from B to A. At least one of those edges, either A to B or B to A, must have a delay element on it. Otherwise, I have some kind of deadlock. Let's say I want to unfold this by a factor of 2. What would it look like? Once again, create two copies A0, A1, MB0, B1. The A to B edges are direct, right? I have no sort of uh, delays over there. Right? But if I look at B0, right, its output is now going to be used by A1, right? Which is basically, in this case, it's directly present over here, right? And similarly, the B1 is going to be used by A2, which is a delayed version of A0. Okay. Now, similar to what we did in the case of retiming, let's look at what happens in the context of the iteration period bound. Right? What is the iteration period bound of the original graph? There's only one cycle. It has a delay given by in a total execution delay is ta plus db so the iteration period bound is going to be given by ta plus db divided by one okay now what about this new graph that i have created by unfolding this right if you look at it the interesting thing is now the iteration period bound is ta plus db plus ta plus db divided by one 2TA plus 2TB divided by 1. So it looks as though the iteration period bound has actually changed. It has doubled, in fact. Right? I mean, it, it obviously got worse. It did not get better. It got worse in this case. Right? Why did it get worse? Because even though I did this, you know, doubling the number of nodes, the number of delay elements did not change correspondingly. Right? In fact, there is you know, a way of proving that the total number of delays over here will actually not change, right? But that doesn't matter. The important point is, what is the implication of this? Are we say, saying in some ways that because the iteration period bound got worse, right? It became 2 into TA plus DB. Does it mean that this unfolding was a bad idea? And the answer is no, not really. What has actually happened is that within this time, 2 into TA plus DB, we are going to actually complete two iterations of the original. Right? So, if I refer back to the original and find out what is the time required for finishing one combination AB, right? on average, the time comes back to 2 into TA plus TB divided by 2. It's going to become TA plus TB again, which is the same as the original iteration period bound. Okay? Remember what happened in the case of retiming? We couldn't change the iteration period bound. We could change the critical path, but not the iteration period bound. What happens in the case of unfolding? Once again, I can't change the iteration period bound. What I can change is, yes, the critical path, the total number of elements, several things about the structure of the graph itself have changed, but the iteration period bound by itself does not change. Okay. Let's take another couple of examples just to sort of, you know, make sure the ideas are clear. Let's say I have two delays over here and I want to unfold by a factor of three very similar to what I did in the case where it did not have uh, the feedback edges. You know, if you go through this, there will be an edge from A0 to B2. The next, uh, but the interesting thing over here is because the B to A edges don't have any delays, it's directly B2 back to A2. Similarly, B0 back to A0, B1 back to A1. Right? That's all that really matters. Okay. Now the interesting thing is if you look at, look closely at this, you will realize that effectively what I have created over here is A0 to B2 to A2, right? To B1, this has one delay element on it. A1 and A1 to B0 once again with one delay element on it and back over here. 
right? What does iteration period bound look like? 3 into TA plus TB divided by 2. Right? So over here, what was it? It was TA plus TB divided by 2 iteration period bound. So over here, the iteration period bound is going to be given by 3 into TA plus TB divided by 2. Why 2? Because it has two total delay elements on it. This is three times the original because I had a factor of three unfolding. Okay. So as one last example, what I'm going to do is once again take our uh, you know original uh, the sort of running example that we've been working with and see how I can use the unfolding in order to sort of improve the critical path and get it closer to the iteration period bound, right? So let's say that I have started off with this graph, right? I'm not doing any retiming. I'm not going to move that 2D, uh, you know, one of the delay elements down to the AB edge. I'm just directly going to first compute the iteration period bound, of course, is 35. The critical path over here is 70, right? So the critical path in this case is through ABC. But the best critical path, even if I do retiming, right? So this essentially corresponds to A alone, right? It's still going to be 40 time units, right? What happens when I unfold? I now get something which looks like this. I have A0 to B0, B0 to C0. Now from C0, the connection is with one, uh, is to A2, right? Which is basically this goes from C0 to A2, right? That's why this particular element is there with one delay, right? And, you know, you can work through the rest of it and find that the behavior remains exactly the same, right? You will find that there is one C1 to, this is basically from C1 to B2, right? That's why it basically has this delay element on it. This is C1 to a3. That's why this delay element. Okay. And if I go through the question that I can now ask over here is what is the iteration period bound of this system? Similarly, what is the critical path and what is the retimed critical path going to be? Right. And if I ask the question, what is the iteration period bound of the system? Essentially, what I have over here is going to be what are the cycles? This is one cycle. This is another cycle. And what I had earlier as you know, the B, B to C back to C, C uh, this cycle has now become one bigger cycle out here, right? So I have something which goes like this, right? So it's basically B0 to C0 to B1 to C1 back to B0. Okay, this is cycle three. So the number of cycles in the final graph is not twice the number of cycles in the original graph. There's no guarantee of that. I mean, in fact, if you look at the previous one of the previous examples, you would have already seen that, you know, uh, even though I unfolded it, it did not mean that the number of cycles doubles. I might end up with the same number of cycles as earlier or, you know, something which is a different, it, it, there's no necessity that it has to double. So what this means is the cycle mean for this one is 70 divided by two. This one is also 70 divided by 2 and this is going to be given by 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 divided by 1 uh, sorry not yeah uh, sorry uh, both of these also are wrong. not 70 by 2 they are both 70 divided by 1 right so this becomes 60 by 1. So in other words, the iteration period bound becomes max of 70, 70, 60 is equal to 70.
Okay. So effectively, in other words, what I'm saying is the iteration period bound as expected has become double of the original iteration period bound. So in some ways, that's good news. Not good news, but I mean, pretty much what was expected. What about the critical path on the other hand? Right. If I go back here and take a look at the critical path, this is a bit more tricky. What has actually ended up happening over here is that I now have an even longer path as the critical path. Right. What I actually end up with is this as my critical path. Right. So this basically becomes 40 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10. Right, which is equal to 100. Right, worse than before. Right, I had a critical path of 70 earlier, now it has become 100. So it's not entirely clear that this helped me in any way. Right, why should I really go through all this process if, yes, my iteration period bound doubled, but my critical path, ideally, what I want is if my critical path can become equal to my iteration period bound, then you know, uh, that's good. It basically tells me that something I have. Uh, done over here means that I can now schedule this perfectly into the time required uh, such that I can meet the, I can get the best possible uh, performance from this graph right so does it mean all is lost no not really what we can do is just retime across this now right after unfolding we now do retiming this goes away and I get a delay element here right now what happens to the critical path I find that in this case, the critical path is now going to be given by this 70, right? If you go and look at it, the original path, which basically went A0, B0, C0, that has been cut. The A0, B0, H has been cut, right? I have managed to get to a critical path, which now goes B0, C0, A0 and has a length of 70. Right. In other words, the retimed critical path has a value of 70 and the iteration period bound also has a value of 70. Right. So this is good news. It basically means that now I have managed to make the retimed critical, uh, the final critical path of the system equal to the iteration period bound, which means that I should be able to schedule these operations in such a way that I can get the best possible performance out of the system. Okay, so the to sort of summarize where we went with this, right? What we have looked at now is that the parallelism part of it, which I looked at in the context of a single FIR filter, was of course a fairly straightforward case, right? I mean, it just basically said, okay, I have a filter, I have the equations. This is how I can create a parallel version of the filter. The unfolding, on the other hand, is trying to do a slightly more general. Uh, solution, right? It's sort of saying that if you can just describe something in the form of a data flow graph, then this is basically how you can do unfolding systematically without even worrying about what is the functionality of each of these nodes, A, B, C, and so on. Right? You just, as long as they are time invariant and they, you know, uh, this entire thing is a data flow graph, I can use this kind of unfolding and I can do all of these manipulations. What is my end goal? Try and see whether I can get a critical path for the system, which is as close as possible to the iteration period bound of the system. If I can, then it basically tells me that, yes, this directly will allow me to do some kind of scheduling of the system such that the critical path becomes equal to the iteration period bound. And I have a repetitive schedule, which gives me the throughput that the best throughput that I can think of achieving with this system. Yeah. So both retiming as well as unfolding are usually sort of applied in tandem, right? One after the other or uh, both applied to the uh, same kind of uh, graphs. And as we will see later, you can actually apply both in order to improve the overall result of scheduling. 